Welcome to Global Energy's quick start guide to wiring our R32 range of heat pumps. It is essential that you have access to our full manufacturer's installation instructions and quick start guide document before attempting to install the heat pumps. We also strongly recommend you attend one of our in-person training courses run throughout the UK every month. You join me now on site where I'm going to show you how to remove all of the cases off the heat pump panels. So if you take a look here, that's the unit itself. The top case comes off by removing all screws all the way round the heat pump. That will then remove the top case. The side case, you need to remove the top two screws, the bottom two screws, and not forgetting that screw on the back then this case will drop down and remove the front case is the bottom two screws and that will drop down and remove I'll just show you removing the cases on the heat pump it's okay to remove the cases with an impact driver but putting these screws back in if you are going to use an impact it must be on the loosest torque setting. We'll lift off just like that. The next thing is the top case to access the low voltage connections in the boards. You've got a screw here, screw here, and a screw here. And that'll just lift off. Then got access to your boards. So there are all of your control boards in the top. Before starting any work on site, please ensure you have got the quick start guide in front of you. This is what it will look like. The first information you need is which model of heat pump you are installing. We have a Castletown, a Cartmel or a Rothsay R32 unit. The Castletown has two 16 amp supplies. The Cartmel and Rothsay have a 40 and 32 amp supplies. The reason why we have two supplies is one is for the heat pump itself and the second supply is for the booster heater. So the Castletown both has a 16 amp for the heat pump and for the booster heater. The Cartmel and Rothsay have a 40 amp breaker for the heat pump and a 32 amp breaker for the booster heater. To work out which model of heat pump you've got, you need to look on the data badge on the side of the unit. If you look at the unit here, it's located on the right hand side, right at the bottom. And you can see Castletown R32, so that will either say Castletown, Rothsay or Cartmel. The most important page within the quick start guide is this one. It's the line diagram denoting where all the cables run within the system. It shows the outside eco link and isolator box, the heat pump wiring centre, the wiring centre within the plant room and the cylinder components. This is the page that will describe every bit of the system. The next page in the quick start guide shows the Ecolink box and power hub. There your isolators. The one on the left is for the booster heater. The one on the right is for the air source heat pump. So your power comes in here and here from the main consumer unit. It's then wired into the terminals here and we take the power from here into the side of the heat pump for the heat, for the heat pump itself and for the booster heater. The Ecolink data connection is these two terminals here. This section is on the Ecolink power hub. That is the Ecolink power hub itself. So you've got your right hand isolator is your heat pump and your left hand side is your booster heater. So I'll take the covers off now and we'll show you inside. So 
So, within the Ecolink Power Hub, you'll bring your power supply from your consumer unit into the isolator. It's then pre-wired at the factory into these terminals. You then take your live and neutral down to your booster heater connection. Again, this white cable comes from your consumer unit into the isolator. It's pre-wired into these two terminals and those two terminals feed the heat pump connector. These terminals go to your touch screen on the data collection side, which is the right hand side of the touch screen. So just for clarity, you can see we've got our power supply coming through into the isolator and then this side's pre-wired. So you're bringing this power in for the booster heater and this power cable in for the heat pump. This section will be pre-wired and then you take your connections from here to the heat pump. So neutral, live, and then your booster heater, live and neutral. So pre-wired, your cable, and then your cable into the heat pump. The next page in the quick start guide is the heat pump terminal box and power supplies. We've got the XT1, XT4, the AP5, which is on the side of the heat pump where the plug is for the touch screen. And then we've got the XT3 connector, again, on the side of the heat pump. This is where all the power runs in the multi-core cable from the heat pump to the tank room. All the numbers that are required are displayed here. The XT1 connector is the power for the heat pump. So from the isolator box down into the heat pump, you connect your live neutral and earth for the heat pump supply. The XT4 is the booster heater supply. So you have your live and your neutral and then an earth terminal next to it for the booster heater. The AP5, which is to the right hand side of all these connections, is where you plug your touchscreen control cable in into CN22. I'll now switch to site to show you all of these connections and where the cables connect into. On the side connections, we have the power supply for the heat pump, live, neutral and earth, and the power supply for the booster heater, live, neutral and earth. We also have the AP5 board, which is where you plug the touch screen in. And it also has a, a, a screen connector. Okay, so that's the AP5 touchscreen connector, booster heater live and neutral, heat pump live and neutral. The XT3 connector is located here and this is where you connect your live and your neutral. So 15 is your permanent live, 14 is your neutral and 21 is the switch for the Belimo valve. If you're using external controls, you put your switch into 12. The high limit stat on Honeywell valve are wired in this formation. We take a live from 21 in the XT3 wiring center through the high limit side of the stat, not the control side, onto the brown of the Honeywell two port valve. You then use the common neutral and earth within the wiring center on the tank. The orange and gray connections on the Honeywell valve just need to be made safe in separate terminals. I'll now switch to site to show you this physically. So this is the high limit stat. So you'll remove the dial, remove the cap, take the lid off, and you've got two stats. This right hand side stat we're not gonna use. That's for control, and we're controlling our hot water from the tank sensor. That's a high limit stat. That's the only one we're interested. Remove that link and just connect your power from your switch for the three port valve and then take the other tab to the brown of the Honeywell two port valve. The Honeywell valve has earth, neutral being blue, the gray, the light gray and the orange are unused and the brown is fed from the high limit stack. 
The Belimo 3 port valve only has three connections. It has a permanent live and neutral and a switch wire, which is either black or white. I'll now switch to site to show you this. This is the Belimo 3 port valve. The Belimo 3 port valve has three cores, permanent live, neutral, and the switch. On the rear of the user interface, so that's the touchscreen controller with two connections. With the CN4 connection, which plugs into the AP5 board, which is on the side of the heat pump, and then with the CN2 Ecolink power supply hub connector that goes from the touchscreen into the Ecolink power hub. This is a touchscreen controller, so this should be mounted in an accessible position for the uh, customer to be able to access to change settings. I'll show you the back of that in a second. So on the rear of the touchscreen, you've got the main plug that plugs into the uh, side of the heat pump that I showed you, P5 board, which is where you plug the touchscreen in. And it also has a, 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 a screen connector. But then your Ecolink, the two cores that come from the wiring center um, next to the isolators are those two. So that plug plugs in there and you connect those two cores to the connections on the wiring center is your Ecolink connection. So these two cores need to go all the way back to the touch screen. If you're using third party controls and not the heat pump controller to control your heating, this is how it's connected. Essentially, you can choose any type of controller, be it Honeywell, Hive, Nest, underfloor heating controller. As long as you connect it in this formation, the heat pump will run. You can take a live and a neutral from the heat pump, 15 and 14 connection, to run your third party controller. And then the switch live back comes onto terminal 12. Essentially, that is a demand for heat. If you do decide to use a third party controller, you must operate your third party pump from that control system too. So if you are sending a switch live back to terminal 12 to demand heat, you also need to run your central heating pump on that same circuit. I'll switch to site now to show you this in real life. Okay, so we're now in the tank room and we have our wiring center ready to wire up. So we've run the multi-core cable from the heat pump and we've run the CAT6 cable from the heat pump. So in the heat pump, if you remember, we had 12, which was the heat demand. We had 21, which is a three-way valve demand. And we have 15, which is the permanent live and 14, which is the neutral. So we put all our permanent lives in the top. So the cable that comes from 15 goes in the top. We have all our neutrals in the middle. So that's number 14 goes into the neutrals and then obviously the earth's in earth. We then have our three port valve demand, which comes from 21. That feeds the white of the three port valve and it also loops down into the high limit stat. The feed that comes back from the high limit stat then connects together with the brown of the two port valve. Then obviously your neutral and earth from that goes in the common neutrals and common earths and your neutral and live from this goes in your common neutral and your permanent lives. The next connection you have is the heat demand, which is this one here. So that comes from terminal 12. You'll take a live neutral and earth to feed your third party thermostat and the switch live comes back from that onto terminal 12 in the heat pump. These other cables adjust the switches from the Honeywell valve that are not required. So they're just made safe on that right hand side. Okay, this section is an exploded view of all the low voltage connections in one place, just to make it a little bit clearer for you on what goes where. So we'll start with the touch screen. So the touch screen has the two connections, the main one that connects to the CN22 connector. The second connection is the Ecolink connector that connects into the Ecolink power hub. You then have your tank sensor, which goes into the tank itself, and that connects into that connector there, the yellow plug. You also have your room sensor, which connects into 
the white connection there. And that's all of your low voltage connections that connect into the heat pump.